بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to our series The Prophetic Parables where we have been covering the various parables that were mentioned by the Prophet وسلم, and we have so far been covering all of the parables that have been mentioned uh, in Bukhari and Muslim, agreed upon by both. And tonight we continue uh, to look at two more parables, uh, also agreed upon, mentioned in both Bukhari and Muslim. The first of these is narrated by Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لله أشد فرحا بتوبة عبده حين يتوب إليه من أحدكم كان على راحلته بأرض فلات فانفلتت منه وعليها طعامه وشرابه فأيس منها فأتى شجرة فاضطجع في ظلها قد أيس من راحلته فبين, فبين هو كذلك إذا هو بها قائمة عنده فأخذ بخطامها ثم قال من شدة الفرح اللهم أنت عبدي وأنا ربك أخطأ من شدة, من شدة الفرح In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says Allah سبحانه وتعالى is more joyous is more happy with the repentance of his servant, when he turns to him in repentance, then one of you who is with his camel in a waterless desert, and suddenly it disappears. And on his camel is his provision of food and drink. So having lost all hope, he comes across a tree and lies down in its shade, losing all hope in his camel. While he is in that state, he suddenly finds his camel standing before him. He takes hold of its rein, and then out of boundless joy he says, O oh Lord, you are my servant, and I am your Lord. He makes this mistake out of extreme, out of extreme joy. And so this is a very famous hadith that is usually mentioned uh, when we talk about at tawbah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to turn to Him in repentance. And so this hadith answers the common question on the minds of many who they have lived a life of sin. They ask, how can Allah accept my repentance when my sins are so great? How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever forgive me? My sins are too many, too great. Or others who say, I can't face Allah with so many sins, especially when I repented and then I went back to those same sins again. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gives us this parable here to teach us a lesson. And that lesson is, to not give up hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what the circumstance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us this in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an to never give up hope. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا 
Say, O my servants, Allah is telling the Prophet وسلم, to inform us about what Allah is telling us. Allah is telling us, O my servants who have exceeded the limits against their souls, who have done everything in the world of sin, do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for indeed Allah forgives all sins. And so there is no sin greater for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned uh, in another hadith, a hadith Qudsi. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah says, O children of Adam, as long as you call upon me, putting hope in me, then I will forgive you for what you have done and I will not care. O children of Adam, if your sins were to reach the clouds of the sky and then you sought my forgiveness, I would still forgive you. O children of Adam, if you were to come to me with sins filling the whole world and then you came to me without associating any partners with me, then I would certainly match your sins with forgiveness. And so all of the all of this it shows us uh, how the servant should never give up hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy. But rather, we should realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he not only commanded us to repent, but he wants that from us and he becomes happy and joyous when we do that. And this is exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to explain in this parable. So in this parable, the Prophet وسلم, draws this scene for us of a man who is traveling by himself in the middle of a desert. He's all by himself and all he has is his ride, his camel, and his food and his drink. So after traveling quite, quite some time, he gets tired and he decides to take some rest. And so he finds a tree to rest underneath, but he forgets something very, very important, and that is he forgets to tie up his camel. And we mentioned in a previous parable of how the one animal that is difficult to basically to 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 have them under your control if you neglect it is the camel meaning if you don't tie your camel that's it it's gonna run off and chances are you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get it back and that was when we spoke about the parable of memorizing the quran so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about how the quran is like that if you don't tie it down if you don't uh, continuously revise the Quran it's gonna go away just like the camel that you don't tie up so coming back to the parable he forgets to tie up his camel and he goes to sleep so when he wakes up he finds that his camel has disappeared with his food and his drink and so out of desperation he gets up he runs about searching for his camel he goes everywhere looks for it everywhere but he can't find it and so he loses up he loses all hope he loses all hope and realizes that that's it this is the end because if you're in the desert and you've lost your ride that had all of your food and drink on it and you're in this waterless desert there's no wells there's no rivers that's it how far are you gonna go you're not gonna be able to survive so he realizes that's it it's over he goes back to the tree he puts his head back down telling himself that 
let me just lie down here and wait for death. That's it. He loses all hope. And so he's lying down under the tree and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his camel appears standing right at his head. And so his initial despair, it turns into joy. Such intense joy that he doesn't even know what to say. He's lost for words. Out of extreme joy. Imagine someone who he's just waiting for death. And all of a sudden, what he had lost all hope in, there it is, right in front of his own eyes. So his despair turns into intense joy that he says something that he does not even mean to say. And that is, he says that, Oh Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. So the Prophet ﷺ used this example to convey a very simple message to those who lose hope and fall into despair. That look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not as you think. As long as the door of a tawbah, as long as the door of repentance is open, and it will remain open until the day you die. But once death comes, that is when the door of tawbah, it shuts closed. And so as long as the door of repentance is open, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to constantly turn back to Him in repentance. And not only that, but He becomes happy when we do that. He becomes pleased and happy when we do that. More happier than this man who lost his camel and then found it. Imam al-Qurtubi, uh, commenting on this hadith, he says, This parable was meant to explain how quickly Allah accepts the repentance of his repenting servant and that he turns to him in forgiveness and deals with him the kind of dealing of one who is happy with what he has done. But now the question is, what is so special about the one who repents to Allah such that it earns him this level of joy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the secret here? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become so joyous? Ibn Qayyim, he explains it, he explains it in very beautiful words. He says, imagine there was a captive of war. He got taken as a prisoner of war by the enemy. And so the enemy took him to a far off land, a foreign land, the enemy land. And he's shackled and he sits in prison. He loses all hope in escaping or in attaining freedom. And also his family members, his friends, all of them have lost hope. Months go by and they haven't heard from him. They imagine he must have died or, you know, whatever. He, he must have met his fate. When all of a sudden one day, he manages to escape. And so he runs. He runs. Until he finds his way home. And he comes knocking on the door of his family. They open the door. And when they open the door, imagine their happiness and their joy. Imagine his happiness and his joy. 
Ibn al-Qayyim says, we, we, the servants of Allah, we have been taken as captives of war in this battle, in this dunya. We have been taken as prisoners by shaitan. And so, when we sin, we have shackled ourselves in the shackles of Iblis. And so when we wake up from our heedlessness and realize our sin, we unfasten those shackles, those chains. And where do we go? We free ourselves from that prison and flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We run to Allah we run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And so when you do that, when you turn to Allah after freeing yourself from the shackles of your enemy, then why would Allah not become so happy? Why would Allah not become so happy that you have turned to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing your sin, regretting it, and turning to him subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And so this is a very, very beautiful parable that the Prophet ﷺ gave us concerning the joy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we turn to him in repentance. Among the lessons that we learn from this uh, parable is, first of all, it is from Allah's mercy that he has given us the opportunity to turn to him in repentance and left the door of repentance wide open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not have to do that. But it is part of his immense mercy. And that's why throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines between forgiving and being merciful. Ghafoor Rahim. He is the all forgiving and the All-Merciful. It's because of His mercy that He allows us to turn to Him in repentance. Otherwise, we sin and sin and sin. If it was anyone else, they wouldn't forgive. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the All-Merciful. As long as we turn to Him in repentance, then He will show us His mercy. The second lesson that we learn is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attributed with attributes of perfection. Allah has the most perfect attributes. Among these attributes is the attribute of joy, al-farah. And so in this hadith, we have the attribute of joy that is attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say that he is happy and he is joyous only in a manner befitting his majesty. Which means that we cannot fully comprehend how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy. When, when, when we human beings become happy and you know, joyous, you could see that. You could see that happy and that joy in a person's face, in his behavior. But with regards to Allah, there is no resemblance between Allah and us human beings. And that includes our attributes. So joy is an attribute, but although Allah becomes joyous and happy, it is in a manner known to him alone. We don't know how. All we know is that Allah does become happy, as uh, as clearly mentioned uh, in this in this hadith. Uh, but we we cannot resemble Allah's attributes to human attributes, which is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam here he explained how Allah's joy is far greater than the joy of this man. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say that you know. This is the parable, this man 
you know, he loses his camel and then he finds it. And Allah is just as happy as this man. The Prophet ﷺ did not say that. But rather, he ﷺ said that Allah is far more happier. And there is no limit to the attributes of Allah. There is no limit. We cannot limit Allah's joy. We cannot limit Allah's joy. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes extremely joyous, extremely happy. We don't know how, but we know that He does. The final lesson that we learn is from this uh, hadith is that uh, we are not held accountable for words that we may utter uh, unintentionally. And so the words that were used by this man, he said, Oh Allah, you are uh, my Lord and I am your servant. Uh, without a doubt, these are words of kufr. But the Prophet ﷺ excused him and mentioned how he said this out of, you know, he made this mistake out of extreme joy. Uh, and so what that shows us is that what matters is the intention. What matters is, did you mean it or not? And obviously this man, when he said that, he did not, he did not mean it, but rather it was uh, a slip of the tongue. We move on after that to the next parable. And this parable also uh, mentions that same animal, the camel. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, he said on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma qala sami'tu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul inna man nasu kal ibil al la takadu tajidu fiha rahila This hadith is also uh, muttafaqun alayh agreed upon mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, People are just like camels. People are just like camels. Out of 100, one can hardly find a single camel that is suitable to ride. Out of every 100 camels, you can hardly find a single camel, one camel, that is suitable to ride. And so in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ gave an example of how difficult it is to find good people, good, generous, helpful people who are uniquely good in every way. Such people who are able to take on other people's difficulties and other people's tasks. Uh, both in the sense of helping other people and taking on their their load, you know, helping them with whatever they need help with, as well as taking on uh, taking on people's insults and injuries, taking it on, you know, not being affected by it, etc. And so the Prophet ﷺ here, he resembled such people to camels. Most of which, most camels, they are no good for riding and traveling. Not every camel is good. Only some camels, and very rare ones, are suitable for riding and also for transport putting your load on them your baggage etc and you know expecting these camels to to traverse these long uh, long distances in the desert and so and so those those that you find are rare. Those that you find that are suitable 
are very, very rare. And that's why here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that out of 100 camels, you may find one that is suitable to ride on. And so if you do find one, if you do find one, then it becomes a very precious commodity because it will take you on that long journey bearing every difficulty for you and helping you to reach your destination. Imam al-Qurtubi, he says, what suits the example here is that a helpful man who takes on the difficult burdens of people upon himself and relieves them of their distress, that such a person is rare to find, like a suitable ride among many camels. And this is the explanation of many scholars concerning this, concerning this hadith. Some scholars mention that what is meant here is at the end of times, when people will become, when good people will become very rare to find, and only uh, evil people will remain. And that is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, of the, of the coming of the Day of Judgment, that only uh, evil people will remain behind. And this is why Imam al-Bukhari, this hadith, he mentioned it in the chapter that he entitled The Disappearance of Al-Amana, Raf Al-Amana. When Al-Amana, which is trust, when trust disappears, when you when you trust, when you when you no longer can trust anyone in society. So Imam al-Bukhari put this hadith under this chapter showing that this is what he understood that this hadith refers to at the end of time when you will barely be able to find anyone who is good. However, uh, this hadith is general, whether it is at the end of times or uh, even in the present or even in the in, in the time when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it. And so, people who are helpful, who you know, care about others and don't only care about themselves, they are something very, very rare to find. Just like, you know, a suitable camel for traveling. And so, among the lessons that we learn from this hadith is, first of all, that this hadith should encourage us to be helpful and generous to others, helping our brothers and sisters when we see them in need and going out of our way to help them out. And we have many ahadith in which the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to do that. One famous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن نَفَّسَ عَن مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِن كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِن كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً that whoever relieves a believer of one of the hardships of this dunya, Allah will relieve for him a hardship from the hardships of the Day of Judgment. And then he said, وَمَنْ يَسَّرُ عَلَى مُعْسِرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Whoever uh, makes it easy for the one in debt, meaning somebody he's in debt and he owes you, and you make it easy for him by saying, it's okay, you don't have to pay me back, or, uh, you know, you lighten, you, you, you reduce the debt that he has to pay you back, etc. Uh, he said, whoever does that, then Allah will, make it, Allah will make it easy for him in this dunya and the next. And then he said, وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Whoever conceals the faults of his Muslim brother or sister, then Allah will conceal him in the dunya and in the akhirah. Wallahu fi awn al abd, ma kan al abd fi awn akhi. And Allah subhanahu wa taala 
will always be helping the servant as long as the servant is helping his brother. And so, if you want the help of Allah, then help those around you. Be a helping servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are always helping others. The second lesson that we learn from this hadith is that the only way to reach that level that has been described in this hadith is by defeating our selfish nature. Our nature as human beings, we are selfish. All we care about is ourselves. And these rare individuals that the Prophet ﷺ spoke of, one out of a hundred, they are those who defeated that selfish nature of theirs. And so the best example of this are the Prophets and the Messengers. They did not live their lives for themselves. They didn't live their lives for themselves. They were not looking for their own personal interests when they, when they were in this dunya. Never, not once. But rather, they would always shun and reject anything that would come their way that would be for their own personal interests. Rather, what do we find? We find that all they cared about was other people. All they cared about was the interests of others, helping others, whether it be in matters related to the dunya or what is greater than that, and that is, you know, the, the akhirah of the people, guiding them, teaching them about what will, what will save them from the punishment of the akhirah. And so they never lived for their own selves, but rather all they lived for was for others. And not only the prophets and the messengers, but the companions, if we were to read their lives, we find the exact same thing. And so they were an example of this hadith, and the only way they attained that status was by defeating their, their selfish nature. The final lesson that we learn from this hadith is that this hadith teaches us a very important lesson, and that is to choose our friends and companions carefully from among the hundreds of people out there. Because a true friend is a friend in need. A true friend is not that friend who he's with you when you guys are having fun and everything is going well. No. The true friend is the one who, when things are not going that well and you're in a deep problem, he comes and stands with you. He comes and helps you. He doesn't abandon you. He doesn't run away when you're in need. And so, it is only friends that bear with you through your thin and your thick, through your good times, through your difficult times. It is only those friends that will remain with you forever. As for others, they will come and go. And that's, you know, that is the reality of life. If you were to ask anyone, they'll say that's true. How many friends have we had in our lives? But how many friends actually stayed with us? You can barely count them on one hand. And that attests to what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith, that the truly, you know, the, 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 the truly 
helpful person, the one who really helps people, he is rare to find. He is rare to find just like, just like a suitable camel. You can rarely, you can hardly find a good suitable camel to travel on uh, from among 100 camels. And so this is a very, very beautiful hadith and parable that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to be from among those who are generous and helpful of others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, beneficial knowledge that we learn and we implement with that we come to the end of uh, tonight's session. And inshaAllah ta'ala we'll see you again next week. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته